And so we ought to learn right away this big lesson that wealth does not satisfy. Wealth is not the answer to life. That really what is important is relationships. The relationship that we have to our friends and to our neighbors and to one another. And to not be resented by our neighbors. And most of all, our relationship with God. And so we read that Zacchaeus went out seeking Jesus. He may have heard. It, 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 it's very obvious that he's heard about Jesus. He has probably heard that Jesus was a friend of tax collectors. He probably also is aware that Jesus has called one who was a tax collector to come and be among his inner circle, Matthew. And it's very likely that Matthew and Zacchaeus knew each other. And so we read in the very next verse then that he sought to see Jesus. Some translation says he was seeking to see Jesus. And the word seek here always, wherever it occurs in the Greek, means with intensity. It means that he was diligent in this matter. To seek means to be diligently seeking. That's always the meaning of the word. And so he is seeking diligently to see Jesus. He's determined. However, also notice here in verse 3 that he could not because of the press or because of the crowd that's around Jesus. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem for the Passover. A lot of other pilgrims are also on the way. As Jesus would walk along, there would be those who would travel with him. They would surround him, listening to him teach, because he would teach even as they walked. And the word would get ahead that he is coming into town. And the crowd from the town would come out. And so we can just visualize people lining both sides of the street, probably two or three deep, wanting to see this very famous rabbi, a man who many of the nation thought was the Messiah, as he makes his way into Jericho with this crowd of people around him. We're also told one reason why he couldn't see Jesus then was because of his statue. He was a little man. But I want us to see a great big lesson here about seeking the Lord. Because Zacchaeus is determined to see Jesus. And uh, as he is trying to see Jesus and can't, he apparently remembers these trees, the sycamore trees that's lining the street. Maybe he's even seen some boys up in some of the trees. And he sees the way that Jesus is moving. There are probably people on the housetops looking down to see Jesus as well, but he wouldn't be invited into any of those houses so that he could see Jesus. And so can't you just kind of see in your, in your mind's eye this wealthiest man in town just kind of pulling up his robe and running as fast as his short little legs would carry him, here probably behind these rows and crowds of people along the street, running down the street to a sycamore tree. Now usually, men in Zacchaeus' position would walk very, in a very dignified way. But he's not even going to let his shortness or his pride keep him from seeing Jesus. And we can see the enthusiasm because the scripture says that he runs ahead. This dignified man running there to climb a tree. These sycamore trees were really what we would call like a, a, a mulberry fig tree. They grew about 30, 40 feet. They had low branches. They spread out. They made great shades. Something that's very welcome in that part of the country. And you wonder, 
How long has it been since a kiss ever climbed a tree? But here he is, this man, usually he's probably so dignified, climbing a tree and probably thinking to hide himself away among those leaves there in this tree because he wants to see Jesus. He is seeking Jesus. But what I want us to remember in this lesson about seeking Jesus is, a, is something that Moses had said in Deuteronomy. He said, But you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find him if you search for him with all your heart and all your soul. Do you remember that Jesus said, Seek, and you shall find? And remember that this word seek means with all diligence, with great intensity, with determination. And Jesus promised, Seek, and you shall find. And you remember how that there was that Ethiopian who was worshiping and reading his scriptures, who'd been seeking the Lord, and the Lord sent Philip to him. Do you remember how that Cornelius, that Roman centurion, was worshiping and praying to God, and, and the Lord, he was seeking God, and the Lord sent Peter to him? You remember how that Lydia went down to the riverside and was worshiping and praying and God sent Paul to her. And the Lord promised, seek and you shall find. I have to believe that those who honestly and sincerely seek the Lord will find. Isn't that what the Lord promised? And you know, in this day and time, anywhere around the world, at any time of the day, 24 hours a day, you can hear the gospel being preached on these shortwave radios. Anywhere around the world where there is mail, you can study the Word of God through Bible correspondent courses. And on the internet, the gospel is to be found all over the place on the internet if you've got a computer and a phone line. The gospel is out there today. But what is interesting to notice is that Zacchaeus is not the only one who is seeking. He was seeking the Lord. But you remember verse 10? It says, the Lord came to seek and to save that which is lost. So just as Zacchaeus is seeking the Lord, the Lord is seeking him. We notice in the next uh, place in verse 5, a great big lesson about compassion. And this comes from our Lord. Because as the Lord comes along... The scripture says, he came to the place and he looked up and saw. Now probably Zacchaeus up in that tree probably thought he was hid away. Nobody would notice him up there. But how astonished he must be as Jesus comes to that place and looks up there and sees him and says, Zacchaeus? Don't you imagine he was kind of surprised that the Lord would stop and Call him out by name? But the Lord not only knew his name. The Lord knew everything there was about Zacchaeus. The Lord knew his heart. He knew his aches of his heart. The Lord knew that he was seeking. And the Lord had compassion. But you know, the Lord knows every one of us by name, doesn't he? And the Lord knows all of our problems, and he knows what's in our heart. And there's a lesson here about God caring for every one of us. Sometimes we sing, you know, the little song, Jesus Loves Me. 
But not only does he love me, he loves all the little children of the world, red and yellow, black and white. They're all precious in his sight. The truth is Jesus has compassion on all. The Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. There's a great big lesson here about God caring for us and seeking us. His compassion on the loss. And so he says, Zacchaeus, come down from there. Make haste, he says. Hurry and come down from there. And so he made haste. You know, uh, he probably uh, comes scrambling down out of that tree. Again, I don't think he's thinking about, you know, pride or how he might look to all the people here as he hurries down out of that tree. Jesus has, has spoke to him and called him and told him what to do and he is making haste to do what the Lord has said. The Lord has said, I must abide at thy house today. I must stay at your house. Why? There would be none of the rabbis there in Jericho that would think about coming close to his house. None of the Pharisees or Sadducees would enter into his house. None of them would have anything to do with him. And here is this great rabbi, this great Messiah, many who are already proclaiming him to be the son of David, saying, I want to come to your house. You know, we could think about it. Have you ever met someone on, for the first time and them say to you, I want to go home with you. What are you having for supper? I don't know what Zacchaeus thought, but boy, he's making haste and he wants the Lord to come, doesn't he? I like this statement. He says, I must stay at thy house. And the idea there for must, I must stay at thy house because he had come to seek and to save the lost and if he was going to be able to touch Zacchaeus, he must stay at his house. And I think there's a little thought here. If the Lord is going to come to us, if salvation is going to be ours from the Lord, he must also be found in our house. Do you get that point? Don't want us to lose that point. Jesus says, I must stay in your house. He made haste and came down and received him joyfully. I think there's something here said about his attitude now because you, you think it had probably been a long time since Zacchaeus had been happy about anything. There hasn't been any kind of joy in his life. But now then because the Lord is coming to his house, there's joy and happiness to be found in his soul. Because Jesus is not only going to make his way into his house, he's making his way into his heart. 